wanna be a Monty boy? Munchy Boys! Oh my god, is this another episode? Episode 35 of the Munchy Boys. 35? Yeah, 35 episodes. Wow, we've been doing this for 35 episodes. How many years is that? Oh my god, you know what, Aaron? It was just our one year anniversary yesterday. What? You're kidding me. Can you believe it's been an entire year of Munch? What a crazy year it's been. Um... But this is not our anniversary special blowout by any means, is no, it? No, no, no. That'll be it's the not. next episode. Yeah, this is the second to last. Next episode is the last episode of the season, episode that will be 36. Yes. Um, hearts, hearts will be broken. Sharks will be jumped. I mean, I can't believe it's 35 episodes so far. I mean, I can't think of the last time I had 35 meals in a year. Oh. I know, right? Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, I, it's like yeah, every 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 that's almost one meal a week, Tony. Almost. I will you... say I I don't I don't, I think it's the most I've analyzed thirty five meals in my life. Uh, I don't actually, know. Actually, probably an, not. <laughs> you're an o- overly analytical son of a gun. So I mean, I I wouldn't that's put it true. past you to. That's actually true. What am I talking about? I swear, like every time we go into talking about the food. I actually can remember like going into that much detail about other meals just for fun. Like with friends, like, oh man, can you believe that? It was so freaking good. It's a good thing that you remember because like our last munch was like, seems like it was like days ago now. I know. Isn't that freaking crazy? Are you talking about the one that we're going to be talking about? That's the one I'm talking about. Oh my about. gosh. Okay, you guys, listen to what a, what an idiot I am. The day we munched, I told Aaron, I was like, well, I'm working on like this paint project and I'm kind of lazy. Let's do it tomorrow. And then that was yesterday. I completely forgot that we were supposed to record. And Aaron's not, he must not be very pushy because he didn't even text me or anything. And I was like, okay, either we were so both so busy that we forgot or Aaron was just like, oh, well, he'll message me about it or something. I don't Tony know. violated this one rule. Talk <laughs> about the much while it's still in our system. <laughs> and that is true. And this is this is kind of gross, but I just let out. So I'm breaking the rule. Yeah. <laughs> Not cool, Tony. Oh Not my cool God, that's nasty. God, I everybody's mean, just thinking, God, I want to turn this off. I don't want to hear about that now. Right. That, uh, yeah. Oh, my no, God. I, I so do nothing. you have a drink? What's your drink for today? Like for tonight's episode? Uh, I wish I could say I was drinking Simple Green <laughs> Cleaner, but no, I'm a... I saw your I'm, post about that. Coca-Cola, zero sugar, zero calorie soda. Oh, my gosh. Or yeah, cola. you've had that quite cola, a bit a uh, quite a bit on these episodes. Okay, are you ready for my alcoholic ass? Uh, okay, no. I'm not I'm not an alcoholic, but look first of all, look at my the size of my jar, my mason jar. Yes. See how it's huge? Guess what this is? Do you see a lime? Uh simple green lemon <laughs> flavored. So uh this is literally a triple ladies and gentlemen, let me repeat that again. A triple vodka with ginger beer and lime. So it's a Mos- it's basically a triple Moscow mule. Well, no wonder you've uh, been spacing off Munchy Boys for a few days. You've been uh, <laughs> getting loaded on uh, Moscow mules. I know. In bulk even. It's so easy to get loaded. But yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I had to quote the Don Darrow song there for a minute. Um so last night, I actually have an excuse. Okay, so I told you that the kitchen was getting getting slightly redone. But here's right. the catch. We were trying to save so much, so uh, set some money. So I'm doing all the painting of the new cabinetry and stuff that we got. So last night, I literally was painting nonstop from 5 p.m. until literally midnight. Like I was, I was doing the priming of all the cabinetry and the beadboard and all that all the way around. And uh, let me just say, I got quite the yoga exercise. You were doing the yoga or like yoga? Basically, every every muscle in my body, I could feel it at the end of the night. And then in the morning, like literally every muscle was achy. 
I was like, oh, good. At least I burned off all those calories. Oh, my God. Speaking of burning off calories, you're going to need to know why I had to burn off calories. Uh, why is that, Tony? Because uh, so our mutual friend, Tony Kieber, messaged me and he was mm-hmm. like, hey, we're going down to Sons of Italy to, for, for the spaghetti feed. Do you want us to pick you and Whitney up some? Spaghetti and meatballs and drop it off. And I was like, uh, yeah, duh. Like, why wouldn't I? Spaghetti feed. Yeah. <laughs> I heard a little beep, beep, beep there. Was that Uh-oh. the alarm that was like, once I take the food too far? Yeah, it, that's why yeah. sp- whenever somebody mentions the word spaghetti feed, my alarm goes off here. <laughs> so, so Tony Kieber was nice enough. He went down to the Sons of Italy spaghetti feed, which is cool. I've never been there before. And he brought it to me. He brought it to us. And then... uh And then so this is why I needed to burn off those calories. We had spaghetti and meatballs for dinner. And then I got to painting, got back to painting. Uh, Later on that night, I was like, oh, I'm munchy again. I had leftover peanut butter chicken that was in the fridge after the spaghetti and meatball dinner. I had some leftover peanut butter chicken and a freaking quesadilla. Quesadilla, that's an idea. A whole case of them? (laughs) <laughs> a case of ideas. Wow, that's a lot of ideas, I'll tell you. But yeah, so like, uh, yeah, I'm glad I at least burned off probably at least half of what I ate. Because like, when I went to bed, I was like, dear God, what did I do? I was a shrew, a food shrew. Uh, I don't know, Tony. The Lord, the Lord was staring down saying, screw you. Is that what, the, what your Lord was saying? It's like... <laughs> The heavens opened up and a <laughs> bolt of lightning hits you. And you're like, uh, I was like, touched. I knew I shouldn't have had all that spaghetti and the other stuff. I, I was justifying it by saying, well, I'm getting all this uh, like yoga exercise painting. So anyway, enough of my rant. What's up with you? Oh, not much. Uh, I've just been uh, revisiting the Winchester's Bar and Grill. Really? Oh, you I, went back. I had their- I had their meatloaf the other day when it was on special, and uh, today I had the cheeseburger and fries. Oh, my God. Speaking of Munchie Boys, uh, I have to give a shout out to... Dang it. I forgot that we... uh, So it was kind of funny. Like, I... uh, I got to try to find the message. See, I spoke too soon. I need to look up... I had to give a shout out to Dang It. Well, dang it. This one's <laughs> for you. Essentially, we got a little uh so we got a little message today from uh one of our listeners asking about he was wondering, "Oh, Corey." So one of our one of our listeners, a guy named Corey was like, "Tony, uh what was your what's your go-to at uh um uh Jersey Mike's cuz cuz he was talking about how he went there and he didn't really like it, so he was wondering my go-to." And I was like, "You need to get the club sub white bread." Everything except pickles and mayo, and then make sure to get the pepper spread. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's one way you could uh, go about it. Yeah, I just thought it was funny because he was inquiring about Jersey Mike's, which is probably like the most boring like thing that we've talked about, <laughs> like just sandwich. But I think that I was know, more, that's more you I talking like about it, thing, you know. But that's true. But I, you know, Jersey Mike's is good when you need a simple lunch. I just you're can't like, support firefighters. No, I'm just joking. I'm just that's kidding. that's just that's firehouse subs. Oh, I'm, think, I'm thinking of the firehouse subs. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Firehouse sub is actually really good. I really enjoy it. I I don't know why I got those two confused. <laughs> Although I will say, <laughs> when when I went there with Scott Dobry, uh, the people there had their masks below their noses, and I was like, oh my oh, god. Oh jeez. I was like, come on, come on. Maybe, what do you think? Maybe this they were is? maybe they were just fighting a fire. I can, that's 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 understandable <laughs> in that situation. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Oh, is this taboo? So I went out riding on all three of the I went out riding on two mopeds and my electric moped today. Tell me if this is taboo. There was an accident site where uh, in uh, Elmwood Park, there was a pole knocked. It was kind of like bent over and there was all this shards of stuff like a car hit it. And I took a photo of the moped. I like pulled the moped up onto the pole like I hit it. And then I took a photo of it. Is that taboo? Like is that is that weird? That's yeah. that's not only taboo. I'd say that was uh, that's uncouth, Tony. <laughs> yeah, probably. And people saw me doing, it and they were kind of like, and then I kind of had that regret, like, oh, I hope they don't think like I actually did this or like. But then I was like, well, there's no way in hell I could do that with the moped. So like, <laughs> I was getting zany. That's not zany. That's just uh, insensitive to uh, 
automobile accident people. Yeah, I will say I think that was probably, uh, if I had to guess, and I'd be willing to put money on this, that was probably a younger person who was drunk speeding through the park. So, A different person that was drunk. It wasn't somebody that was drinking a triple Moscow mule. <laughs> oh on the God. road, out exactly. for blood, looking for poles to run down. Well, Tony, oh my you must God. be stopped. You're a madman. Oh, my God. Speaking of drinking and driving, not that I did this. This is a perfect transition to where we <laughs> went because when oh. we were on the back from where when we were on the way back to my place from where we went. Remember I told you the story? There were like three younger people. They were like kind of speeding around. They had no license plate. And then what do I see? Three little shooter bottles get thrown out the window, like littering right in front of me. And I was just like, dear God, these people are up to no good. Throwing shooters out the window, speeding around with no license plate. Okay. Anyway... That just was not cool, people, so don't drink and drive. This has been a no. PSA by the Munchie Boys. Drink when you get home, and then drink no. so much that you get hungry and have fourth we're, meal. We're uh, legally obligated to say don't munch and drive, but I feel like you know in certain situations that's uh, permissible. Oh, my God. I had I had a faux pas <laughs> today. I don't know if you saw my Instagram story, but when I, when I picked no. up the Broncos for me and Whitney... I set it on the ground because you know how greasy the bags get? Like there was already mm-hmm. grease on the bags. I didn't want to put it on my seat. So I put it down on the ground, leaning back against the seat. And then I took a sharp turn and they literally f- spilled over and fries spilled out. And I was like, God. Damn. Oh, no. You lost fries, Tony? It was a fo- it was a food paw or a faux pas. Uh, food paw is, a, is a kind of fun. Food paw. <laughs> But yeah, so do you have any wacky stories from since we had, uh, you know what? Since no. We Not really. I mean, I've just been kind of laying low, working on arcade projects, and uh, oh my wondering, God. When to- wondering when Tony's going to get ready to record this episode. <laughs> You're busy with your arcade, so what? what's the newest arcade news? Well, like let's yours? see. No, it's just little things here and there, you know, putting monitors in the Pac-Man cabaret. Uh I don't know. Did I talk about this at all? The last last episode, I can't remember. But um, I don't. I don't think so. The very first uh, like arcade machine that I got was a Pac Man Mini, a cabaret machine that was originally a you know like originally a Pac Man from 1981. And uh, at one point in time, this guy refurbished it and sold it to me with a 60 and one game board in there, so you could play like you know. Donkey Kong, Frogger, and, you know, 60 Galaga classic arcade machines, but it had an LCD monitor in there, you know, like a computer monitor, not a CRT, like a TV picture tube, like a glass tube, like we, like we grew up with. Yeah. So I finally, you know, we restored the, the CRT, the cathode ray tube monitor in there. So now it's a, now it's got an actual glass tube and it feels more like a vintage arcade machine and not just a modern computer Nice. And you said it actually looked way better, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it looks way better. I mean, it's that completely makes sense because I always try to explain this to people. Like when I watch like older, like standard definition things on like the new TVs, they look like absolute shit. And I always try to like explain that on a tube TV, it actually looks better. Like, yeah, Yeah, I mean, the, the, the current retro aesthetic is people who really didn't you know grow up around a lot of like that's what you see like everything's big and bright bold colory pixels but it's like these were designed to where when you would see them on on a TV set in North America for example with NTSC with a 60 f- fields and uh, you know it, it, as per second mm-hmm. it would smooth the colors out so like say if when you're playing Legend of Zelda link wasn't just here's the flesh pixels and here's the green pixels everything would kind of blend together and look in the raster would look a lot more complex yeah so anyways they just don't know they just don't know what it was like i mean you know so i'm trying to you know where i can you know make restore things make them uh more vintage more more appropriate more and then my cubert i powered up my cubert the other day and the digital sound that's the swearing like yeah, yeah there's like a speech synthesizer in there that's uh does all sorts of garbled stuff. When you turn on a Qbert, it's supposed to say, like, I am turned on. And my digital speech chip was out, so I took it apart and tried to reseed everything. And I think, you know, it's one of those things where the machine sits around collecting dust. It's not, I'm not, I don't leave them on, like, 
all the time, only when I'm using them. So I was going to say, do you ever just do regular maintenance? Well, I mean, you have to. You have to do regular maintenance. Maintenance is a part of the hobby, is you know. But you know, maintenance for a place where you've got your machines on like twelve hours a day, seven days a week, versus a place where they're just in your living room and maybe yeah. you'll turn them on. Like it's more of just dusting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, so I, especially I put with pinball, right? Because like when pinball's on and being used nonstop, well, it's like adjusting and pinball is you know it's 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 a it's a chaotic play field of steel balls running all over the place. I mean, it's 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 chaos. It's not just a Nintendo where you're like everything is completely programmed and going to respond yeah. purely in a this is how we programmed it way. I mean, you know, you're dealing with physics and things. Are you're going talking to... about visceral metal spheres just bouncing around, hitting... bouncing around, hitting things, <laughs> hitting poles, <laughs> taking pictures with their mopeds, saying, "Look what I did! Did I do that?" <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? It's where I say, Tony, are you that? nuts? Remember when Steve Urkel used to be like, oh, Laura. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Did I do that? Oh, my God. I just realized this entire episode is going to be people being able to hear me take, like, with my giant jug with the ice, it like actually makes kind of a lot of noise. And I've been like yeah. sipping on it nonstop. So they're going to be able to hear it. And normally I take those kind of sounds out. Like I took like about like holy 10 minutes shit, of you, like, you do. I didn't even know you week, did that you know, much. But, uh, you did that much I, editing. I didn't even know I'm, you I'm did gonna, that. I'm going to leave them in this time just because. Uh, yeah. You, Tony. Oh my god, I literally did not know you even like did edit. I I knew you added fun stuff, but I didn't know you actually took out any sounds. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, now you do. And now I won't. <laughs> <laughs> that well, means it'll be done sooner. No, should we talk ab about what we went? Into, oh my we gosh, what we went, where we went, how we got food bent, how much money we spent, how we didn't celebrate Lent. Are you gonna pull out your? Uh, well, we definitely didn't celebrate Lent. No. Are you gonna pull out your uh, your your bank statement to to? Get your paper trail going on? No, because I know how much it was. Or, are you, oh, or do you mean like my history of like what we've been munching lately? Yeah. <laughs> okay, should I just go out and say it? Yeah, tell them where we went. I mean, I don't even know if I know the full name. I mean, should I you know, make sure I get the full name? I mean, is it a... You, you, you go ahead and say it because I know the full name. And then if you get it wrong, then I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. Okay, too. I'm going to say it's a... Jim's Rib Haven. You got it. The Haven of Ribs. I'm 3801 Ames Avenue in North Omaha. Oh my North gosh, Omaha. the place, the haven, the safe haven of ribs. Yes. I have never actually eaten there, which is weird because, like, I've driven by it tons of times. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I've I shot a scene for a music video in front of it. Uh, dead giveaway with a ion ray gun. Yeah. Nice. So you used him for a backdrop, and you didn't even buy any little ribbies. No. That oh. was actually my video. But um, <laughs> So, I, you know, it's about, it was about time. And you know what? I want to go back. I totally want to go back. You want to go back, and you might say, can I get a baby back? <laughs> yeah, I'll go baby back. I'll go <laughs> oh my baby God, back yes. in time. Yeah. The Jim's Rib Haven. Jim's Rib Haven. Let me just say, so barbecue is not, I mean, besides Munchie Boys, okay, Munchie Boys has actually made me had, have barbecue more than I would, like, ever. You know, like, honestly, I probably have barbecue once a year. I think I've probably had it, like, four times within the last year with Munchie Boys and, like, regular everyday life. Uh, trying to, I'm trying to think. Like, yeah, I literally only... so. It was my first time, too. I'm just saying I usually never branch out to, like, the barbecue department anyway. I love it, but I also feel like that's one of those things I, that's never a go-to for me. But I think it might have to be a go-to after getting what we got. Yeah, and uh, what did we get, Tony? Oh, my dear God. Before we tell them what we got, why don't we tell them the setup of kind of, like, what, what happened, what we did. Aaron sent me a link to an article. 
on just a text and he was like it said like jim's rib haven something 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 and it was like i want to say noon or something like that or 11 something something something, something. yeah <laughs> he sent me an article about jim's and i was like oh my god do you want to just go there like do you want to just meet order our food like take our photos and then it was kind of warm it was actually like a nice day it was sunny and so i was like do you want to actually few days have been nice yeah it's been awesome so i was like do you want to come back to my place sit on the porch munch like we can actually hang out on the porch and eat and like we which is like a fun thing these days. I mean, you know, you got to get out and do something outside. So uh, he was like, OK, let's do it. So we drove there separately. Um, I pull up first and I was like, oh, my gosh, I called Aaron because I didn't know how far out he was. I was like, Aaron, they have a drive through and it's just like the drive through set up at the place that shall not be named. <laughs> Voldemort. Oh my gosh, uh, he knows. And what I'm I was like Tony. About, yeah. I'm like literally blocks away, and I showed up like seconds later, and we uh, took our pictures, and we went to the drive-through, and I went through the drive-through, and I was like, "Give me the bony box and yep. the saucy fries." Okay, I had a question about this, and it's not even like that interesting, but like who? Uh, so somebody recommended the bony box somewhere. I believe it was in our in a, either in like the. Post where you ask for recommendations to eat. Oh, I think oh my somebody God, really. Asked, okay, yes. I'm looking that up right now. See, you should be paying attention you, to this stuff. Tony, you keep no, ranting. You're, you're busy like drinking and like taking like you know pictures in front of like <laughs> crash sites in Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, my um, gosh! Yeah, I think the picture I sent to you had something to do with saucy fries because they're literally fries covered in barbecue sauce. So my thought was either these are going to be like really, really, really good, or by the time we get to Tony's house and eat them, they're going to be kind of soggy and, and not good. They were really, really good. The sauce is great. You can get like mild or medium or, uh, or hot, and uh, Tony and I both got the hot sauce. And uh, let me tell you, when they say hot sauce, they are not kidding. This sauce was Did it make hot. your nose run? It made my nose run. It made my taste buds kind of like, you know, first jump for joy and almost say like, uh, okay, hopefully this doesn't get any hotter oh, because if it does, okay, we're going to melt Fr down. Francis Rowe. Yeah, Francis is awesome. Yes. So he said, get the bony box. Oh my God, yes. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. And speaking of Francis, so he's like the mastermind at Olivers, like at their food place. So... Uh, I think I saw on Facebook that they have some different items now, or did I? Was oh I my god! That? Are we gonna have to do a little spring follow up? We like, might. We're gonna have to go have sit to. out on the patio and do a little follow up. Unless little, that was uh, just like a special thing that he had for a day or something. But maybe. I saw something that. But looked even really, if it's really just good. for fun, because I feel like remember we have to maintain our fun munches. Like. Yeah, I can't remember what that was now, but um, I saw something the other day from Oliver's, and I was like. Oh, yeah. Am maybe I we'll maybe we'll just some maybe we'll just get some people together and even just go there like to get like see if there's anything new and just go for fun. Like it won't even since we already did Munchie for them. So yeah, that'd be cool. Cause like I always think about that. Like we started Munchie because we always naturally munch just for fun. But then like now it's almost turned into like I mean you know it's just a job now. I mean we each get a hundred thousand a year for this, and it's like you know it's become kind of this corporate thing. Like, yeah, yeah. we're uh, not a hundred thousand bucks, but a hundred thousand like uh, <laughs> not even a hundred thousand views. We get like a hundred thousand like uh, <laughs> uh, megabytes per second stream. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, dear God. Anyway. But yeah, I always <laughs> think about that. I'm like, we got to make sure we keep munching just for fun, too. So, yep, don't want to forget munching for fun. You know, it's like that's how that's how deep into gluttony I am. It's like there's the show and then there's munching just for fun. And then there's munching for survival. Like, <laughs> see, whenever we go munching, I, I'm sitting at the table like uh, Matthew McConaughey saying, like, I used to munch here before they paid me to. <laughs> and then Tony's like, they don't pay you to. And I'm like, oh, well, I quoted Matthew McConaughey before they paid me to. And you're like, nobody's paying you to quote Matthew And then Aaron Gum was like, I either get cash, ass, or grass. And I was like, Aaron, that's kind of crass. And he was like, right. that rhymed. And I was like, and yeah, like, that rhymed. You're on this like, rhyme in time. 
And then I'm all like, all right, all right, all right. Let's change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> that rhymed. Look at my drink. The bottom Wait. of the lime. Oh, look at that. My, my internet connection is unstable, it says. Unstable? Kind of like the relationship between Cain and Abel. They were brothers. Oh, How, okay, I need to stop. Okay, I can't rhyme anymore. I, this isn't a munchie boy thing. <laughs> I wonder if I'm just. I wonder if I'm just getting slightly buzzed and I'm like going off on a little tangent. I think so. this might get really interesting, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Let's gosh! Say- Speaking of interesting and kind of a bummer, so. You know how we put out we put out our one year anniversary like uh, statement like thing where we want people to. Speaking of that, let's all announce that now. So it's it's been our one year anniversary, which you all know. Uh, yesterday was our one year anniversary, but we want people to go to Facebook and Instagram, click on the microphone, and send us a DM with a recording that's kind of like a fun Munchie Boys memory that you've had while listening, or your own Munchie story. That's kind of fun about how like you we we uh, talked about a place and then you went there and what was your experience or like a quick little anecdote about that. Yeah. And what was your what's your favorite place that we talked about? What's your favorite song? Yeah. What's your favorite vintage synthesizer? Oh, my gosh. I know. Do you think anybody will remember? I mean, hey, they can go uh, back and listen and be like the Juno 60. Because, um, you know, we got to make this anniversary special completely insane and we want you we want to hear your voices you know the voice memos in this thing we want to we want to you to be a part of this because you are a part of this you're all a part of this if you're listening to this or you've ever listened to this or you've ever thought like gosh those munchy boys i mean I yes like we just do it for jibs. fun yes we just do it for fun but we also do it for our fans <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess i shouldn't say fans i should say listeners <laughs> The only fans I have are the fans that see me in the uh, Mazda commercial. So, yes, you might have seen Tony in a, in a, in a the Mazda commercial uh, shopping for a Mazda CX five. I'm not gonna lie, they're literally somebody every single day. Usually somebody I know, but every single day of this year, somebody says that they saw me in that. They're like, "Wow, Tony, are you uh, shopping for a compact sport utility vehicle?" <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? The irony turbo engine. And I'm like, you know what? The irony of the situation is actually um, before I even did that commercial, I actually bought a Mazda CX-9. So it's funny because I do drive a Mazda CX-9 from Woodhouse originally. And it's funny because so many people have been like, oh, did you get that like for doing the commercial? They either asked me if I got it for doing the commercial or if I got it because I did the commercial. And I'm always like, no, I actually already I already had this before. You're like, I was driving Mazdas before they paid me to drive Mazdas. I'm like, I actually got this on Craigslist like before I did that, like a year before I did that. Like, so, yeah. But you know, it's a it's a it's a fantastic vehicle, right? It's been it's been working for you. Honestly, I lo- I love my Mazda. Like it's it's super quiet. Like the the engine runs super smooth and quiet. Like yeah, let's go on about nice. cars. You know, sometimes our podcast is about HVAC. Sometimes it's about cars. You know, yeah. Most of the time, if it's about cars, it's about DeLoreans. But I will say, I did buy my DeLorean from Woodhouse from their. Uh... Alfa Romeo dealership. Uh, they Ooh. took it, took it in trade for uh, for an Alfa, I believe, and um, or a Maserati. They took it in for a Maserati, and uh, uh, oh my but anyways, right. yeah. Oh, I don't know. Did we we didn't really finish talking about Jim's Rib Haven, did we? Oh, I know, but you know that's the thing. We're kind of bouncing around. You know, yeah. we're kind of bouncing back and forth, kind of like uh, like if you threw a rib bone, it would. Okay, that doesn't work. I don't know. Okay, so uh, yeah, so back to we 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 got there. Did we already talk about how there were the yeah there was the drive through? I called Aaron and I was like, Aaron, there's a drive through. I was actually pleasantly surprised because I was like, okay, if there's a drive through, that means it's fast enough to where we can actually go through that drive through. Yeah, because uh, you know we neither of us had been there before. We weren't sure if we'd have to call the order in and you know or whether we'd have to like walk into the place and because I've been to barbecue places, uh, you know. Where it's literally like one person behind a counter and like, you know, you yeah. tell them what you want and then they go off and they make it. And 20 minutes later, here's your food. So I wasn't sure if that's what it was going to be. But 
it was a rather well oiled machine i i feel like i mean we went yeah. to the drive through and you know as far for as far as like being like a mom and pa shop that's actually getting people you know their food and stuff like yeah. that as they're ordering it and not just like fast food i mean it, it's it was pretty quick i mean it wasn't like yeah it was really know, it was really quick for what it is it wasn't like wendy's fast where it's like you know you order you show up and there's the grub already there because it's they're dishing it up from the the smoker as you're ordering it you know and, it's, it's, uh, but, um, and after while you're listening to this or as you're listening to this or after go to our instagram or our facebook and look at the pictures that i'm going to post because i got we took our selfie out front so you see the entire front and then i took a picture of the smokestack aaron knows i was impressed by that there's this super oh, yeah. tall smokestack with like it just looked like like withered and worn and like in a good way. It looked like there was that, that nice smoke coming out of the top. You could imagine the ah. meat. You could imagine all the meat under there, like just cooking and like, uh, and then I got a picture of that cool yellow, like ordering like uh, the big old placard or whatever they would call it. The ordering screen, like not, not screen. It's not a screen. It's like old school, like uh, yeah, whatever it's called. <laughs> and I know I was like, we were looking at that smokestack, and we were uh, we both immediately like we're like you know, Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins, and we we're <laughs> singing like Chim Chimney Chim Chimney Chim Chim Cheru. That smoker makes barbecue and how about more barbecue. You? Please give me a bony <laughs> box times two. That's not enough. Give me chili cheese too. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I also got a big order of chili cheese fries. You did, and they looked delicious. They had chili on them and cheese on them, which I guess is why they were <laughs> chili cheese fries. Uh-huh. I had the saucy fries. He had the chili cheese fries. My fries so, were covered in sauce. His fries were smothered in chili and or cheese. <laughs> and and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aaron, you know, I, I kind of, I teleported into our listeners' minds just now. Okay. And yeah. they were thinking, you know, they keep saying bony box, but what the fuck is a bony box? You know, like um, they're they're just thinking, like, tell us, come on, I don't know, I haven't Googled it yet. What is the bony box? I didn't ask, I just ordered it, but you asked, and what did they tell you? So what they told me, and it wasn't right, but it was kind of right, but it was like, I mean, it was right in the end because I was like, oh, ho, ho. but anyway, uh, the person on the end of that microphone said, oh, it's kind of like a little bit of everything of all our meats and everything, and I was like, oh, I'll definitely take that. So I got that, and what I got when I ordered the bony box, and they said it was a little of everything. What I was imagining was like pulled pork, you know, brisket, a couple ribs, like a little sausage. But uh, what it ended up being is the bony box is actually like a bunch of ribs, uh, uh, like sausage, the smoked sausage, and then two pieces of like it seemed like maybe Rotella's bread or something like that, and then uh. I think that was it. And I got a ton of barbecue sauce because when I got my bag, there was literally barbecue sauce in the bottom of the bag. I had to like carefully take so it out and throw it away. So much sauce. Yeah. So uh, it was seriously a ton. It was so big that I also got the, since I got the chili cheese fries as well, I'm not joking. I whipped out our Christmas serving platter. This serving platter barely gets taken out unless it's like, oh, hey, we're going to make charcuterie or like we have to serve a Christmas thing like a dinner. I pulled out the freaking Christmas tray and I dumped the bony box onto it and the chili cheese fries and I displayed it all nice. By the way, look at our pictures again. You'll see that display. That's lit. I want to say that's a foot and a half long. That serving tray. I'm gonna point out that we got the exact same thing. His is on the serving tray. Mine was in the container as we were uh, we as we purchased them. Oh my gosh! This might be the only critique about the. So so go on go go ahead and explain, Aaron. You felt like you got a little bit cheated compared to me. Well, you could see everything that he had, and uh, he had, you know, we had like all the the ribs and the probably that what the burnt ends and and then that you had like a like a million sausages yeah <laughs> i had like 
two little cut sections of sausage. Not I two t- links of sausage, but two like cuts off of a link. Yeah, and, you and had, I like, told Aaron, Aaron was like, how much sausage did you get? And I said, I got like seriously eight to 10 pieces. Like it literally, what it seemed like was like a full 12 inch piece of sausage cut into pieces. Like 10 to 12 I, inch link. Yeah. And I just got like just, just two of those little like little cut pieces and he was like like, damn it yeah and i was like well both of our boxes were full like maybe he got more ribs i don't know i could have gotten more of one other thing or whatever i mean i'm I'm like i'm not complaining about the amount of food i mean i you know yeah ate the rest later for for uh you know for dinner and it was one of those grass is greener on the other side situations where like if you didn't see my order then you would have been totally like fine with it right like, but the way that he had it like so obscenely displayed it's like i can see <laughs> i can see these sausages lying all over the place and it's like oh my god yeah go those? back and look at the pictures the way i <laughs> the lay the way i laid out the bony box and the chili cheese fries on the platter it was like i swear neighbors drove by and like they were looking out the window going jesus like they were they were like i got a dirty look like they could see the platter from the street yeah, I mean the the poor delivery driver. Uh, oh bringing, my God! You know, yeah, Whitney's noodles over was like, you know, screw <laughs> screw noodle and company. I want I want some of that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So that that that's what happened. So me and Aaron got uh, the gyms, and we we were sitting on the porch eating, and Whitney was like, "Oh, by the way, I ordered food." And I was like, oh, God, this delivery driver is going to drive up and like see these guys eating like big platters of ribs and stuff on the porch and be like, what is going on? Is this just like is this just like a a fuck it fest or something like speaking of fuck it fest? We forgot we didn't go to we should have went to block 16 for that fuck it bucket. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, I I didn't see those pictures. I was uh oh. I was too busy going get, getting Winchesters all week long. Oh, I know that's your thing. That isn't that awesome. That that just goes to hey, that's a good testament to how good it was. So, oh, you froze. You froze. You froze. What do you mean I froze? You froze on the screen, but that's okay because they didn't Am know I, that. Now I I shouldn't even have said it. I should have just bantered for a bit. About am I how still good. Fro- am I still frozen? No, you're not. You're you're totally smooth uh. now. But uh, so oh yeah, so actually, as a little bounce back to the Winchester, let's do a little. We can do whatever we want on this. It's our show. So tell me, you've gotten it two times since. Like, let's talk about that a little bit. The first time you you thought it was good, but it was a little like, oh well, it didn't travel well. Like, so let's talk about these. Well, other- I didn't say it didn't travel well. I mean, it's just like you know. It's a sandwich covered in gravy that it has yeah. to like drive 15 minutes home, and you know. But the meatloaf was quite meatloafy. Ooh. I mean, when how often do you have meatloaf as an adult? You I know. know. I, I don't know. I can't remember the last time I would have had meatloaf, but it was really good, you know. And I, then I, today the the cheeseburger was really good, and the price on the cheeseburger, you know. Oh my god, isn't it like 4.99 or something? Like, like five, not maybe like 5.99 yeah. or something. 4.99. I don't know. It was, it was insanely ridiculously inexpensive. It's just like you know. Where else can you get a burger, like a good fresh, you know, you know, ground beef patty burger? And the bun had like a big thick bun. It wasn't like some kind of like a little fast food thing either. It was like a oh. big a big bunnily bun, it was. Nice. And then uh also I've been going to a Christy Cream in Council Bluffs for uh for Sherbert lately. Ooh. Yes. Oh, speaking of that, we're gonna have to do that, like you said, next season. Yeah, I think uh, we should like. Maybe, maybe that could still- be a fun bit. Vi- maybe, maybe we'll get crazy. Maybe we'll do a uh-huh. little video episode and have Derek be a guest. I think Our Derek friend Derek like Silkman, that. local actor, not local actor, national actor. Okay, probably local, but still. I do have a possible role for him. I need to call talk to him about that. I'll mention that to him today. We're going to have a little uh, video chat here later, anyways. So. Sweet. Yeah, that's cool. What what do you uh, can you can you divulge anything or no? I cannot. I cannot oh, divulge what this is. Oh, I can't wait to hear. It's based off of something that he's done before, though. It's just a matter of okay. reprising something. So sweet. That's cool. Oh. If you're familiar with all of our works, you know you'll, you'll oh, eventually build it. Yeah. Okay. Piece it together. Nice. I can't wait to see what new projects are await. Yeah. Potentially. <laughs> Did we ever tell you about like what we want to do with uh so because of COVID, are the headliners kind of screwed because of 
like crowds and stuff like that. Like, honestly, yeah. I do not see even this summer. I don't even know that it would be like a good idea to maybe we could do it, but I feel like it would be rushed. We've been talking about doing this is this is kind of outlandish. You know how people always say he sounds like Thomas Hayden Church and he's kind of like him. I don't see it. <laughs> Damn it! You're ruining our concept. Okay, uh, I yeah, I know. I, I obviously, <laughs> so we you know. we've literally been tr- <laughs> been thinking about doing a feature where him and Thomas Hayden Church are brothers, and essentially it would be like a like a brother comedy dash like travel maybe like travel buddy brother movie or something like that. And I, of course, there's no real story or anything there, but it's just a rough concept. And we were hmm. thinking like, wouldn't that be awesome if we could actually get Thomas Hayden Church to do it? Like, I don't know. Yeah, we would we would need a good script, but yeah. Well, I mean, good luck getting him to do it, but you know, it's uh, as he could. <laughs> well, I mean, we would pay him, but it would probably be the minimum. <laughs> yeah, the, we're gonna, the, yeah, basically, it'd be the minimum SAG rate. Yeah, <laughs> pay him like fifty cents in a in a in a in a, in a, in a bony box from Jim's Ribhaven. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be worth it. Yeah, I I'd do it for that. I mean, heck, I I mean, I've. <laughs> I've done more for less. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So speaking of Jim, speaking of the bony box. Okay. So remember I was proud of myself because I had leftovers, right? So I had a little bit of the chili cheese fries. I had uh, like five ribs left. And so I, uh, I'm i going to talk about how it holds up. So it was in the fridge. It was cold. I got it out later that night. And I will say, and I this might be a thing where I already had it that day. But I didn't feel like it was super good. Like, it was just kind of like when I ate it. Well, you know, like any fries in the fridge are not good anyway. But I ate like the couple of ribs and the fries. And I was like, God, I kind of wish I would have just like either waited till the next day or just not even ate it. Because like it wasn't that great. It's one of those things where you might as well just eat it all. Like while you have it. I don't know. What did you think of your lefties? Like... Well, I, I think I finished all my fries. Oh, you know, so I did, yeah. It might have been the fries that ruined it. I don't know. Because I wasn't going to eat the fries. But, I mean, the actual leftover ribs were great. They, oh, they were that's great. good. Yeah. I think I had some that night, and then I think I had some, like, the next day and the you know early on. Nice. That's yeah. cool. But, but um, yeah. So, I think we both were kind of, like, taken back by the uh, the complexity of the flavor. I mean, it oh, wasn't just, yes. like. yes. Yes. Because, I mean, I, you know. We've had ribs before, but these ribs were like, I mean, there's so much complexity, so much texture, so much like smoke, but not like, yeah, you know, here's liquid smoke in a stainless steel container. This is like, you know, the, yeah, it's smokestack. You could tell that the, yeah. the, they didn't have like Dick Van Dyke over there, like chimney sweeping that smokestack. Yeah, you know? it was like, it looked rusty from my memory. I'm envisioning like an 11, like 11 to 20 foot tall, like rusted out smokestack. Like, I'm going to say seasoned. Yeah, see, seasoned. <laughs> I don't think it was smokestack. rusted out. What am I talking about? Yeah, yeah seasoned. Like, the... Literally chunks of iron oxide falling <laughs> in our. <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, it, it felt like it had like, uh, like an aged smokiness, a seasoned loveliness. Like yeah. it, there was something about the flavor that was like, yeah, like Aaron said, more complex, more, more. I kept saying more rustic, but I don't know if that's like the right term. But like, here's the thing. Munchie boys never use the right term. They just go, hmm, that was good. Yeah. If you, if you want to hear like the right term, try listening to some, uh, some other Omaha food podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. Listen to that him. wasn't like a dig. That's just purely a joke. I mean, come on. We're all friends. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's one of those things where uh, like the flavor and the smoke definitely had more of like like character to it, if that makes sense. Like it had like, you know, there's other places that are good, but it's kind of like it. To me, that flavor had more of a character and like a depth to it that uh, could not be beat. It could not be beat. We tried to beat it, but it, we, it was not so. Yeah, we tried to beat it once and we couldn't. Beat it. But yeah, so I will say I'm definitely going there again. I want to try something else. I might actually go simple next time and get like some type of sandwich or like brisket or like, I don't know, like just something else. Wow. I, I might, That'd be I'm, a good idea. We should definitely go. I'm going to go back. Um, You know what we didn't get, though? What's that? We didn't get the cobbler. Oh, yeah. You were regretting that. They had peach cobbler, and I was like, $5? Yeah, I don't think I need the peach cobbler. And then uh, 
immediately on the way up to Tony's, I was like, oh man, I could have got peach cobbler. You're like, why didn't Aww. I get that? Oh, life is short. Why not make it shorter with cobbler? What if like when you ordered, when you asked about it, you were like $5 and you were like, is it a foot long? And they were like, uh, sir, it's a little normal piece of pie. Yeah. Never mind. That didn't so, quite work. I don't know, but we need to try it again. Yeah. So overall, I will say it was absolutely lovely. Definitely worth going to. It's quick. It has a drive through. I don't know what the inside's like because I've never been there before. Uh, it's right off Ames. I, I forgot the number cross street. Do you remember? Uh, Here, I'll look I it up I, real quick. I, it was, uh, it's a uh, 38, uh, 3801 Ames. Uh, so, I mean, it's, I mean, if you've ever like driven on Ames, you've, you've driven by Jim's rib Haven. I mean, it's, you know, take a look at the pictures that we post. There's, there's some good, good photos there. So yeah. you'll get, you'll really get the point. I'm definitely going there again. I'm going to try some different stuff. It's lovely. Now, on the way there, I mm. drove up 30th Street and I drove past Time Out Chicken. We definitely have to do Time Out sometime. Ooh, that'd be good. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, my God, Aaron, I almost forgot a segment. I almost forgot segment? a segment of our show. Random Review. Ah! Are you ready? No, yes. The food was absolutely wonderful. Had a half slab of beef ribs and two brisket sandwiches. All was excellent. Sauce, mild, was sweet with a slight tang. Wonderful. Recommend this place highly. Are you ready? Highly. Another oh. random review. I went to get a quick meal using the drive through There was minimal waiting. We got our meal within four minutes. Very pleased. That and one sounds last, like our experience. Oh, one last one. random review. Wonderful food. A little pricey for me. Watch out. Medium is hot and hot is very hot. Children should definitely have mild. Nowhere to sit and eat in. Drive through. Hard to find from road. Our busy Ames Ave, Ames Street. And if you're not familiar with area, it's easy not to see. So I will say A... They're wrong on almost every respect. Uh, yeah, the, maybe the price the spice, was quite reasonable. Maybe they're right on the spice level. Oh yeah. So no, first spice, of all, the, the price was not high for barbecue. This no, this person is the, crazy. What was our box? Like the bony box was like the bony box was I want to say was it twelve ninety five or like uh, thirteen ninety five or something like I think that? It might have been like more like eleven. It was definitely like worth it. Like it was not but it was too like much. A giant container overpacked food, with yeah. like. Barbecue. I mean, yeah, that's, um, it was not too gonna, expensive. Where are you going to find that deal? Where are you going to find that? Uh, at? The drive through was actually good. I get what they mean if they wanted to eat somebody somewhere because this was uh, I almost said eat. I accidentally said eat somebody. Damn. Um, yeah, it was. I, I it said think... hard to find from road on busy Ames Street. No, uh, it's not. It no. was not. So I don't know. That wasn't a good review. OK, one if you last. Know where, if you know where it is. Remotely, if you have any idea where it is, it's not hard to find. If you, if it's just if you know it's somewhere somewhere on Ames, somewhere between like thirtieth and like ninetieth, well then yeah, maybe maybe it'll be hard to find if you're just like randomly driving around looking everywhere, you know. But like, uh, all right, go yeah. on. Last one, last one. Wow, the ribs are out of this world. Place is a bit of a dump with only four stools and a tiny counter to eat in, mostly carry out. The woman behind the counter makes it worthwhile to go in. Don't skip the peach cobbler and it's just like grandma made. Oh my God. Sometimes reading the reviews are like up and down like a roller coaster because they were places a bit of a dump with only four stools. You can say, don't, don't they understand skip. the euphemism of saying hole in the wall? It's like, you don't have to say dump. Just say it's, yeah, it's kind of a hole in the wall. Like, yeah, I guess. Did you ever go to Richie's Chicken? Huh? That place was kind of like a dump where you go in there and there's like, you know, like a few tables and there's like, you know, like, like, chicken grease stains everywhere on the carpet and everything. <laughs> but it's also so incredibly delicious and you can't quite, you know, yeah. it's closed now. So it's like, kind of oh, funny. Can... Like play. Uh, so the term place is a dump. Like I, isn't that literally <laughs> referring to like a dump, like a garbage dump? Right. Yeah. It's like, you know, I was a raccoon. I, I was eating in the, in the back alley dumpster. The place was a dump. <laughs> God. And I loved uh. every, Every chicken bone of it. Yeah, I guess as long as they say it was good. That was funny. 
the, yeah. the the lady behind the counter was worth it. That's hilarious. Um, uh, that's yeah, kinda, but I can't wait to try that. more stuff. It was super good. It was great. It was lovely. Anyway, on to. But, um, I think that any last remarks about gyms for you? No, other than uh, we salute you, Jim. Wherever you are, whoever you are. Yep. Exactly. However you are, wherever you are, whoever you are. And now um, we will move on to, have you been watching anything since we munched? Anything good? Any movies? Any shows? Any have illegal I been downloads? Watching anything? Let's see. I haven't really been watching anything, I don't think, lately. Have you? I did text you and I said, oh my gosh. Well, I didn't say, oh my gosh. I messaged you and I said, "Did you have you ever seen In the Soup? And I thought that it was a Jim, Jim Jarmusch movie. And the only reason I thought that is because he plays a part. He plays hmm. a little cameo role as this guy named Monty for a little bit of it. This filmmaker okay. in the thing. But I just see, see now it's director Alexandra Rockwell. Alexandra. Alexandre Rockwell. Yeah. I don't know who Alexandra Rockwell is. I don't either. Like that's the thing I'm looking now. Uh in the in the uh, in the soup. Uh yeah, nothing big, I don't think. Uh anyway, now I, I'm thrown off. I'm thrown off because I thought it was Jim Jarmusch. But it was with uh Steve Buscemi. It was a really weird movie, and it was remastered in 4K from film. It looks like it was either 35 or 16 millimeter black and white. It was from hmm. 1992. It's New Yorker Adolfo Rolo is your classic head movie auteur. In his mind, he's creating deathless classics of the screen. Back in the real world, he can't pay the rent on the downtown grot hole he calls home. So basically, it's about this filmmaker, this young filmmaker, and this completely zany fucking weirdo older guy is like, I want to make your movie, kid. And he's like willing to give him money, but he ends up being this complete like psycho kind of gangster like criminal guy that like he and Buscemi is kind of like what the hell did I get myself into but it, it was fun it's it's like super it's super cool kind of like 90 like 90s indie film like weird like I think you would like it but yeah in the soup at first I thought you were talking about like the soup with like Joel McHale uh-uh. I'm talking about in the soup <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. In the soup, in the soup. So you'll, well, I might, I might have to look into that. Yeah, that especially if I don't know if you have. I think it's on Amazon. It's either Amazon or Hulu, but it's the 4K remaster, like uh, from uh, film. So. You know, I don't have Hulu at the moment. What's the point of that? It might be Amazon, but hmm. anyway, I'm sure you'll find your your download somewhere. I'm sure I can find <laughs> it. I'm a I'm a resourceful lad. Yeah, you know how to look stuff up. But yeah, I watched that. And it, it kind of, so have you ever realized that like certain, uh, I don't know how you are with this. You might be more patient than me. Just with the way the, like with the internet and just like our society and everything, I find myself to be like not very patient. So like I clicked on that movie and I was like, I know nothing about this. And I started watching it and it was kind of like, I felt like it was a little slow paced and I was like, Okay, I'm going to force myself to just like be patient and watch this. And I was mm. kind of like analyzing, okay, I'm a filmmaker, but like I felt weird that I had to like make myself be patient to just watch it because I was mm. tempted to just turn it off and be like, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to watch it. Like I'm just going to like keep browsing for something else that's like, you know, a show or something dumb or I don't know. I feel like I kind of need to fa force myself to be patient and like watch films these days, like certain yeah. movies. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I, I, I hate that our attention spans are getting reduced because of society, kind of. But I don't know. I hate that our attention spans are being reduced by, hey, look, there's Fermet the Krog over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway. All right. Well. You get what I mean. You're like, no, I actually have a good attention <laughs> span. Speaking of get what you mean. um, you know, last week we did the uh, the Roland Juno 60 synthesizer. Oh, my God. What are you thinking for this week? And then before that, we did the uh, the Alpha Juno synthesizer. So for this week, I'm going to complete the trifecta, folks. The Roland Juno 106. 
from 1984. Oh, it's my. Kind of, I was one years old then. Wow. I was much older than that. Did I just um, say one years old? One years, Tony. <laughs> one years. Dear God, am I buzzed from the triple, the triple vaudeville? Yeah. I think you might be. But um, the Juno 106 is basically the more upgraded version of the Juno. Not upgraded, but the later version of the Juno 60. The Juno 60 is more of the classic new wavy thing. It has the wood side panels. It has an arpeggiator. The Juno 106 has MIDI, and it's all sleek. It's a little more techno. It's a little more mid to late 80s pop. Nice. And it's going to sound a little something like this. from 1984 oh my gosh and do you know how to play it well oh my god that Whoa, sounded great do i you you took me back to the 80s with no that really one. do i <laughs> yes you took me back to the 80s and how about that roland uh tr 707 drum machine on there too kind of a that, period appropriate that was a good choice that fit in perfectly the way that the beats hit along with your synth playing it was kind of just like you knew exactly what you were doing you knew what you were going for and you you know you conveyed the message you were trying to send which was you know this sounds 80s ish this is a synth i picked Great. it now, this week now i've got to record something that actually matches this description <laughs> <laughs> everybody but- do you think the the funny thing is is everybody by now knows that we always like re record our reactions before you actually record? <laughs> there's no there's no secrets about the podcast. Kind of like when we pretend like we we're not going to say where we went, but everybody already read the tag, and they yeah, already like, know they've, they've already saw. Like it's like Munchie Boys do Jim's ribs this week. Come on, <laughs> check out the Juno one to six. Why are they yeah. beating around the bush? Just say yeah, we went to yeah. Danger. But I, what are we going to do for our anniversary special? Oh, my God. What do you think? Like, what What do you First think? First off, if you're still listening to this right now, you're hardcore and you're already going to, like, send us your message and you're going to be in the anniversary special, right? Yes. We have to at least have a couple messages. I would be happy with even, like, a couple little voice, voice messages directly sent to us on Facebook or Instagram. Click on the microphone. Or send us little video selfie messages, too, and maybe we'll uh, make it into a video episode. Oh, my gosh. But what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Oh, my God. They have yet to hear where we're going to go, but we will decide that, and it will be... We might have to make it like a hoorah, like season three finale. Right. Like one of, You know what? We have a couple go-tos that we haven't covered yet, and it might have to be one of those. We could go to the go-tos, or... We could try the mythical Bang Bang. Oh, my God. Imagine that. Imagine that. We <laughs> order one thing, one thing at one place. Then we order another thing at another place. And we go crazy. I mean, that would be totally crazy, but also totally on brand for what we do and who we are. We'd be munchy boys, munchy toys, munchy chips ahoys. Okay, that's so. Funny. Send us those messages. Let it, you know, be a part of our anniversary blowout. You know, our 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 season three finale. Yeah, mm-hmm. we want you to join the Munch Army. Yes, absolutely. it's like the Kiss Army, but uh, not as militant. <laughs> <laughs> Munch attend. Anyways, until then, munch you later, ma 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 munch Munchie boys, chomp. 
I love how that's always your edit point. The chomp. <laughs> chomp. 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 Chomp.